we are in a difficult situation with many challenges to handle at the same time. There is of course the climate challenge, the need to get the CO2 emissions down. And in Europe, on top of that, we have the geopolitical situation and the war in Ukraine. The gap between supply and demand is even greater. So there is a very big need for more fossil free energy production in Europe. Industrial production and transportation are the two sectors that emit most CO2 in Europe. Electrification of industrial processes is often the solution. And we already see a lot of examples of that, especially in industry, I think, when it comes to electrification of processes for steel making, for sustainable aviation fuel, for cement, for plastics, and many other products and services. We also see an increased penetration of electric vehicles. I can only look at the city where I live, which is Stockholm, how the charging stations are popping up almost like mushrooms on every corner of the street these days. I drive an electric car and I never had a problem to actually find a charging station. And I think that is one very concrete example of how you can incentivize people and make the everyday life easier. We see a huge increase in the number of people who want local energy production. I've seen some quite early development of solutions where you can have an integrated system for a family house, for example, where you put solar on the roof and then you produce green hydrogen, which you can storage, and where you can both heat your house and your water at the same time. Supply of raw materials and minerals is definitely a bottleneck, I would say. So unless we manage that, it could very well slow down the progress. More exploration is probably also necessary in order to make sure you have sort of a resilience in the supply of this. There was an announcement from the mining company in the north of Sweden that they have found quite a lot of rare earth metals that could actually provide quite a lot of what is needed, at least in Europe. But then I think there is another aspect as well, and that is that when we use these raw materials and these rare earth metals, can we also recycle them? So the battery production we see today, for example, can probably be much more recycled than it is today. And then we can reuse the resources that we have. I actually think that we cannot afford to exclude any fossil free technologies, given the magnitude of the challenge. Short to midterm, the technologies that are there are wind and solar, but midterm I think that nuclear is also an excellent solution in order to bridge this gap between supply and demand, and then maybe especially with the help of these small modular reactors. So it's about making sure that we actually make a reality out of the technology, the knowledge and the capital that is actually there in order to run this. And we need to increase the pace now.